Hey guys, welcome back to Ride Out MMA, and we got some exciting news for ya. This is week number one of opening up an MMA gym in my 20s. Today I am 27 years old, and it's time to get into the business of opening up our own MMA gym. Right now, for the past two years, we've been running an MMA program, which has boxing, kickboxing, and some MMA elements, but it's mostly been striking. But we also offer a lot of personal training, and we're doing this out of a uh, another gym. More or less, we've been subletting at our friend's gym for the past year, uh, two years, and it's time to uh, take the next step and get into our own space. It's not that we have a poor relationship with them, it just sort of reached its peak, and I think it's time for us to actually expand and uh, take this whole thing a little bit more serious. I'll give you a little bit of a background for how we got here and where we think we're going to be going next. So I started teaching martial arts when I was probably 19. I stepped in and I was substituting as a Muay Thai coach when our coach just didn't show up one day for one reason or another. And I just fell in love with the role of being a coach. I always loved being a competitor and I still was a competitor until not that long ago and I'll probably compete again in the future when I make more time for myself. But for the time being, uh, I've been mostly a coach. So. Basically, I started teaching at that school and I started doing personal training from then. Uh, COVID-19 happened, so I ended up leaving that school and taking all of my clients and training outside at a park. Uh, and I did that for two years straight in Toronto, outside in the cold, training my clients under an overhang next to a pool. So for two years straight, I trained them outside like that. I started doing freestyle wrestling at the time, and that's where I got into contact with these guys that I'm working with now. And I realized that they didn't have any classes during the day, so I offered to basically sublet the space. I would use it during the day. They have all the regular class times in the evening, and then we're good to go. So I started with just offering you know, three classes a week, and it was $100 a month. And I got a couple signups that way. It was pretty tough. Like the first year of it, there's so many times I thought like, man, should we keep doing this? Does this make any sense to do this group program or should we just stick to the personal training? Because the personal training was always awesome. That was clearly the bread and butter. It's done really, really well for us. It's still way better than any of the group classes. But the group classes started to pick up and carrying their weight. And we ended up taking on one of our friends to start coaching other classes for us in the early morning. The uh, 7 a.m. time slot but more or less our program has only operated for lunchtime classes Monday to Friday which is kind of bizarre when you really think about it but we've still done pretty well in spite of that and if anything that's just I guess motivation to take this to the next level because if we're doing this well even with all of the challenges that we faced through trying to sell a program where we only train at lunchtime and it's a hundred dollars a month uh, imagine what we could do if we actually had an entire gym to ourselves. Anyways, long story short, we've made the decision that it's time to open up our own gym and we're really, really excited about it. When I keep saying we're, I do everything with my, my wife, Yazzi. Next steps. Basically, you know, for the past couple of weeks, I've just been looking for places, trying to figure out, okay, what's going to be the best spot for us to, you know, start up our program again. I don't want it to be too far from our already existing program because obviously I'm going to bring all of these existing clients, all of these existing students, right, our friends, our martial arts family into this new space, and I don't want to make it too much trouble to actually transition them over. I'm not stupid. I know that some of these people are going to move on, and it might not be the best decision for them but I know it's gonna be the best decision for us in the long run I'm pretty excited to say that I think I just found a spot maybe you know this is week one and you guys are in this journey with me I haven't signed a lease yet I've looked at two leases I got ghosted by one and then I kind of got screwed by the other so we're gonna be trying it out a third time and I want you guys to kind of be there with me and I think it would be kind of fun uh, I guess you know, series to, to get started with because I don't know a lot of other people that have gone out of their way to sort of document the experience of opening up an MMA gym, especially the way that we've done it, which is pretty odd. Uh, and we're young. You know, I'm not a black belt, but I'm still going to run a successful MMA gym and I want you guys to be here with me. So basically, that's where we're at. 
So this is the space that we're potentially looking at. And we haven't made any final decisions yet, and I'm not sure when I'm gonna post this video, but this is what we're thinking about. 1356 Queen Street East. Uh, yeah, so more or less, I, I'm a guy that's like constantly online, constantly checking everything that I need to be, I guess, looking for to start this gym. So I've been looking for used mats. I've been looking for punching bags and trying to find like good quality stuff that I can get at a bit of a discount. And lo and behold, it's like uh, the gods spoke to me, especially after those two other leases fell through. We found this spot, $3,500 monthly. Seems not that bad, which is kind of insane to say, but I can't find anything for less than six grand a month. So $3,500 sounds not that bad in the grand scheme of things. Um, and right now, funnily enough, funnily? Sillily, simply, funnily? Anyways, whatever. This is currently an MMA gym at the moment, which is just like the, you're like, you're fucking kidding me. It's like they, they threw it in our laps. It just so happens to be five minutes down the street from me and my wife in Toronto. And uh, it happens to be actually the gym where we met these wrestling guys in. So the wrestling guys were using this gym, uh, Central Toronto Wrestling, I'll just use them by name. Central Toronto Wrestling was using this gym and they moved out and now they have an even better location which we've been sharing with them since. Six MMA moved into this spot. I'm not sure what's happening to them, but it's not really my problem. But right now, it's an MMA gym and we know the space. So, I think this might be a pretty good option. I'm gonna see the place tomorrow. We're gonna see how it goes. I'm gonna come back, talk to you guys about it, and we'll go from there. But this is the place we're looking at right now, $3,500 a month, a basement in Toronto. Can we make an MMA gym out of it? I think so, and it has been, so should work out, we'll see. One thing that I'll say when it comes to actually looking for places, and I can say this as a person who does reselling as well, that's also a little side hustle I have, but it's got nothing to do with the MMA thing. It's just so we could make ends meet when shit was bad. But is basically, you know, being the first person to reach out to these places. So if you want to be the first person that reaches out to these places and really shows enthusiasm and excitement for whatever space or something that the person is selling, then you always need to be searching. So I usually check twice a day. I'll check first thing in the morning and I'll check first thing in the evening for any spaces that might look good for me. So I'm constantly, constantly, constantly searching. And this goes even if you're trying to rent an apartment or if you are looking to get into research selling right if you want to get the best deals on things either you got to be first person in the door or you got to wait long enough for them to want to lower their price because they can't sell it so that's kind of uh, a really simple way of getting better deals on things is just constantly searching constantly 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 and reaching out and being very genuine when you reach out to these people too so when I called I told them right away exactly what I was about, what I was looking to do, how I would be a good fit for the space, and how quickly I'd be willing to come and see it and work on a schedule that's good for them. See, I'm being easy in as many ways as possible uh, and trying to at least humanize myself to the person who's trying to sell to me. And when you do stuff like that, you tend to get better results in the long run.